this is from my first book, Caribbean and African Languages. When Fanon ascribed a basic importance to the phenomena of language in his economic and psychological descriptions of French Creole speakers, in as early as 1952, many may have thought that he overstated his case. Today, over 50 years later, his perspective is as true as it was in 1952. Indeed, it still remains true that to speak a language means more than to use a certain morphology and syntax. It means to support the whole weight of a culture and civilization. One could argue that this is the natural state of world events and that the language that we speak as our mother tongue is also the language of the civilization and culture that we wish to support. In the case of Caribbean Creoles, this is not the case because the language itself at least partly, is a symbol of the historical conflict evident within Creole languages. That is, the conflict between the European enslaver and the African enslaved. From the moment the first African was enslaved by Europeans in Africa, a new relationship was forced upon peoples of African descent everywhere. This social relationship has had long-term effects upon the high status of the languages, languages of the enslaver and the related low status of the languages of the enslaved. African-speaking related languages of the Niger-Congo family in Western and Southern Africa were taken to the Caribbean. Their mother tongues were suppressed through a system of dividing the speakers of the same languages to make slave revolts more difficult, and a related system of punishments for using an African language, including death, the whip, the chain gang, etc. Despite this system, Africans preserved the common grammatical core of their related African mother tongues and express these grammatical relationships using the only vocabulary permissible within their respective slave societies, that is, European language vocabulary. Out of this gigantic human creative feat was born the Creole languages. Of the Creole languages, the great majority have their vocabulary base in either the French or English descendants of the Indo-European language family. For example, Jamaican Creole dag, compare English dog, St. Lucian Creole patois, chien, compare French le chien, the dog. The grammatical structure of the Caribbean Creoles originate from the West African and Bantu language descendants of the Niger-Congo language family. For example, Wolof, Chui, Umbundu, Kikongo, etc. Due to emigration to Britain, a number of Caribbean Creole speakers are now resident in Britain and the influences upon Creole languages in Britain from Standard English have increased in contrast to the influences of English as an international language upon Caribbean Creoles in the Caribbean. The similarities between the vocabulary of the Caribbean Creoles and the European languages from which most of their vocabulary is derived are self-evident. At the level of structure, however, the differences between Creoles and European languages mark the points of similarity between Creoles and African languages. 
the similar use of adjectival verbs in Creole and African languages is, for example, also evident in Caribbean written literature, as in the poem The Stone Sermon by Braithwaite. The poem has a chorus going Suki dead, Suki dead, Suki dedu, uh, literally meaning Suki, a noun, is dead, uh, being expressed just by the adjective dead. This is also found in a short story, A Reasonable Man by Calendar. Sometimes the dance floor so crowded that everybody butting into one another. So the dance floor so crowded, meaning is so crowded, and everybody butting into one another, everybody is butting into one another. So the adjectival verb form is typical there of West African structures. In their use of more aspect-based pre-verbal markers, for example, Jamaican Creole A and St. Lucian Creole Ka, both used to indicate progressive action. <laughs>